the first thing you want to do is download the bookcase image. And you're going to be referring to this image here throughout the tutorial, so leave this up. So I'm going to download the first image. Then I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. So the first thing you want to get in the habit of is when you open up your first image, you're going to notice that it defaults the name of that image to background. So I'm going to double click this lock here because I don't really need to have my background layer locked. So I'm going to go ahead when I double click that padlock image, I'm going to title this bookcase and hit OK. And now you'll see it's unlocked and I can go ahead and move it if I ever need to. Another thing that's always good to check is if you go up to image, image size, you're going to see that this image is a very large image, which is fine. And you're going to also see the resolution of 72. And this means that this image, if I were to print it out, would be kind of blurry. And you can kind of see when you zoom into the image, it's not the best quality image. And we're going to talk about this more in the future. But just know that you always want to kind of check your image size in future projects when we get started. All right, so I have my bookcase. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab my magic wand tool. And I'm going to click on that white background here. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And you're going to see what looks like a checkered background. And when you see this, this basically means that there's nothing there. Um, if I were to print this out, it would actually be white. So the checkered background means it's transparent. So this is fine. Um, next, I want to download the photos. And I'm going to drag and drop that in here. When it pops up, I actually want to, this is going to take up, if I look at my reference photo here, notice how this takes up a lot of space. So I need to transform it. When I drag it over, notice how it has the transform controls automatically selected. I'm going to go ahead and I don't want this to happen. So I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard whenever I resize something because I don't want to distort it. So I'm just going to make these a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to hit enter. And every time you drag over, say, a second image on top of one, notice how it has this little icon. That means that if I were to try to edit, it's not going to let me do, go too far. So always right click and rasterize the layer. You want to make sure you're right clicking over here on the layer. Don't click on the thumbnail picture because it won't let you. All right. Um, so I'm going to use my magic wand again, and I'm going to click on that white background and I'm going to hit delete because I don't want that. Okay. I'm going to grab my move tool and a thing that you want to usually have turned on is auto select. So right now your guys's is probably set to be off and it probably says group. So you want to check auto select and change this to layer. And what this does is it lets your move tool. So I'm going to zoom in with control plus let your move tool, so right now I'm, I'm clicking this and moving it, but if I were to click, say, on this background, notice how over here, so you want to look over here, when I change, when I'm clicking on it, automatically selects it. When this is turned off, it doesn't let you do that. So I really like this because I like to just kind of click around instead of having to change things manually through over here. So auto select is on with layer. So I have my photos, and next I'm going to download my next image and that is the candles so take note that the candles are on the third shelf on the right okay so I'm going to hold down my spacebar because my spacebar turns my little move tool into a little hand so that way I can move around my little canvas. So I'm going to drag this down here. I'm going to hit enter. I don't need to transform it through the size or anything. It's it's good. Magic wand again. Click on that white background. Hit delete on your keyboard. Again, I forgot to rasterize. So that pops up. I need to right click. See how it has that little icon? Right click, rasterize. And still I do this so much I always forget to rasterize and that will remind me to do that. 
So my next image is going to be the mannequin. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to download my mannequin. Again, drag it over and drop it. It's going to go right by the candles. I need to resize it. Remember to hold down shift. Hit enter when you're done. I'm going to rasterize my image before I forget. So right click, rasterize layer. All right, so now with the mannequin, I'm going to zoom in, control plus, space bar to move around. I'm going to select that white background and I need to get in here. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to add to my selection. And it's going to get a little hairy in these little small areas. So I'm going to zoom in again with control plus. I'm going to hold down alt because because notice that shift adds to your selection. Alt puts a little minus sign so that way I can go in and edit. I'm going to adjust my tolerance because right now it's set to 30. And that means wherever I click, it's going to click 30 pixels that are similar within a 30 pixel range. I'm going to set this to 1. I want my magic wand to be very picky. So I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to kind of take this. The mannequin has this little wire thing in the back. So I'm going to bring those back. Hold down shift on those little white areas. Okay, and it doesn't need to be super picky, but just be aware of what shift does and alt. So I'm just going in to add all these little white pieces there. Okay, so this looks better. I'm going to zoom out, control minus on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the delete key. And you're going to notice when I zoom in, so I'm going to get rid of my selection by hitting control D for deselect. You're going to see sometimes you're going to have what's called haloing. And see how it has this like white line? To get rid of that, we're going to go to Layer, down to Matting, and we're going to select Defringe. So what Defringe does is when you move or paste the selection and you use the magic wand, the halo, Defringe replaces the color of those pixels with the color, color of the pixels that are in here. So basically what it's going to do, I'm going to tell it to go two pixels in. And it's going to change the color of that white halo to two pixels in. So it'll take this color and fill it in. And you, look, you can see the difference between this. It, it looks so much better. Um, so that's what Defringe does. It's underneath the layer option. Um, and you can't have a selection active. It's after you're done with your selection, you can Defringe it. So I am done with the mannequin. And now I'm going to move on to my next image, which is the vase. So I'm going to click and I'm going to download. And you can see here that the vase has a really complicated background. And I'm again going to switch back over to this because I need to take note. It is on the fourth shelf down. I'm going to take my vase, bring it down. All right, so if I were to go with the magic wand with this, you're going to notice this is going to take a while. Even if I set my tolerance to be a higher tolerance, it's going to have a hard time. So the best way is I would use a magnetic lasso. So I showed you all of these different selection tools because some of them will work better than others. Um, you could try a quick selection on this. But I'm going to go ahead with magnetic lasso because something new with it is that so with the magnetic lasso, you click to start it, and then I'm slowly tracing my um, mouse around it. You want to go fairly slow. If you click your mouse, you can set those little points, which are called nodes. So I'm going around. I'm clicking on some areas. If it has a hard time kind of wrapping itself around. But something new about this is, say if you mess up. So say if I go out, if you hit the delete key on your keyboard, it'll go back a node. Okay, so I'm just kind of tracing around. 
pushing the space bar down if I run out of room so that way I can hold the space bar down and kind of click and pull my canvas. Again, clicking with my mouse to force a node onto a spot. If I mess up again, hold, push delete on your keyboard and it will delete that last node that was made. Okay, so it's having a hard time right here. So I'm gonna go in and manually kind of click where I want those edges to cling to. All right, so I close it up. Now with this, if I were to hit delete, once I rasterize it, um, it's gonna delete the actual image. And that's because I didn't select the background this time. I actually traced around the actual image. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, step back. Um, so what I need to do is right click on my selection and hit select inverse. It's gonna reverse that selection. So now I can hit delete and the background was selected when I did that. So again, control D to deselect. I need to straighten my vase out, so I'm gonna select my move tool, control T, because I wanna transform it by rotation. Hit enter. And we're gonna use that defrench trick again, because you can kinda of see there's a little bit of haloing. So I'm going to go to um, layer, matting, defrench, Let's do two and hit OK. And you can see there, it kind of cleaned it up a little bit. So from here, I want you to continue through these images. But I want to see that you guys can utilize these selection tools on your own without my help. Um, through this tutorial, video tutorials, I mean, if you need my help, if you don't remember something, try to problem solve it as best you can. And I would be glad to come over and help you um, if you don't remember something through the rest of these. So fill up the shelf. And in this next video, I'm going to show you how to make shadows.